Hey guys, I'm Katherine Shelton and I have some awesome news if you are selling bundles or white label products on Amazon. So the good news is that if you have a product that doesn't have a UPC code, you can now apply for an exemption and the process has become a lot easier, a lot more straightforward than it used to be. This is really, really exciting news. If you are creating bundles, you no longer need to buy third party codes from Leading Edge or Nationwide and you really don't even need to go and buy them from GS1, which are super, super expensive. Unless, of course, you have a product that you want to uh, create, make it a new product, sell it in the bricks and mortar stores. If you are trying to launch your private label product and sell it in Target or Walmart, then you will need a GS1 code. But if you are just creating a bundle, just testing white label products, you don't. And I'm going to explain how you do it. And it's actually a really straightforward process. So the first thing you do is go to this page on Amazon, which says how to list products that do not have a GTIN. And a GTIN just means a global trade item number. I, I remember that, a global trade item number, which is referring to basically a UPC, an EAN number, a JAN number. I don't know what a JAN number is, but not a JAN number or an ISBN. So you can list any product that doesn't have one of these identifiers. And the way you do it, first of all, look down here, Amazon give you the eligible cases for a GTIN exemption. So one reason might be that you are selling a product where the brand doesn't provide a GTIN for the products. This might include private label or handmade products. You might also be selling non-branded products that you've bought from a wholesaler, maybe overseas. Thirdly, parts that do not have a GTIN. So for example, some automotive parts may not have one. Or number four, look at this, bundles that do not have a G10. Customized bundles, they don't have a UPC. So first of all, it does tell you to go and look at the product bundling policy. I'm gonna assume you've done that. And then this is what you need to do. So this is why I used to say don't do this because it's too difficult. It's too many hoops to jump through. You used to need a support letter from the brand owner, the manufacturer, or the publisher of the products in your bundle. If you had three items in your bundle, you would need three letters from all of the brand owners of all of those products. Now the good news is you don't need that anymore. See, so have a support letter. No, nope, I don't have a support letter. Okay, fine. What do Amazon need? They just need a list of products. So this is what I did. If you have 50 or less products to sell, they want a complete list of your products. If you have more than 50 products, just give them a sample list of products. So this is what I did. I went request approval and that asks you why you need an exemption. So I just said, okay, I'm selling bundles. And it tells you briefly, tell us the reasons, such as I sell private label products. I literally went, I sell bundles. That's what I typed in there. And now what you need is a template. So this is easy. You go open uh, the template, and I chose the one that was non-branded products. See, there's, there's really two. There's the branded products and the non-branded, and actually there's the media as well. I chose non-branded for bundles. That downloads and I get uh, a spreadsheet that looks like this. And there it is. So I know a lot of people look at a spreadsheet and go, oh no, but this one is actually really, really simple. So you can see here, there's actually a couple of different tabs. This one is the instructions. It tells you how to fill it in. And then this is all you have to fill in. Super simple, it's literally four fields. So let me show you one I've already filled in and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so here's one I did earlier. And what I did with this, I just filled in the title here. So I did two bundles, I filled in two bundles in here. So for one, I had this Japanese panda bundle. So that was the picture I used, it was, a cute panda stationery set, origami paper, cookies, and a felting kit. So this was the picture I used, and I, I put the picture, the image, on my web server there as a panda bundle. 
So I used my own web server to host my images. However, if you don't have a web server, that's fine. There's a lot of places online where you can host images. I'm using one here called postimage.io and it's super simple to use. You just go choose images, I'll go to my desktop and I'm gonna select my panda bundle .jpg, upload that to post images there it is, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna click through, and here's a little bit of a secret, I'm just gonna right click on that and do open image in new tab. And what that will do is give me a link directly to the bundle image, and I can just copy that and paste it directly into my spreadsheet. So that's a really easy way of getting a URL for your image. It's just using post image Io. So I included the URL to that picture there and I put the title in here Japanese panda themed stationery and snack bundle includes letter set, origami paper, hello panda snacks, two answers and felting set. So that's exactly what I would have called this bundle if I was listing it on Amazon so I just put that title in there. The skew, you can really put whatever you want in here. In fact Amazon tell you a unique identifier for the product is signed by the merchant, an alphanumeric string, one character minimum. So literally you could put one, two, three for these, but I decided to put 10001. It looks legitimate, it looks like a good SKU number. And I put that in the category grocery because it has those panda snacks in it. For my second bundle, I put tiki party set, Include centerpiece, paper plates, napkins, and table decorations. Actually, I probably should have put a little bit more information in there, but we'll go with that. It, it worked, it got us through the process. So the skew for that I did 10,002, and I put this in, whoops, I put office supplier, uh, that should say office supplies, I think it auto-corrected. And this was the information I put for that, the URL I put for that, which was tikibundle.jpg. So again, I uploaded this image. This was the bundle picture I've been using for this. I uploaded that to my website so Amazon can go and check out that picture. So that was how I filled in this template. Okay, so that's completed. And what I actually did with this, I exported it as a PDF just because PDFs are a bit easier to look at. I made it the best quality. Depending on what computer you're on. I'm on a Mac, so I'm working in numbers. If you're on a Windows computer, you'll probably use Excel, or on any computer, you can use Google Sheets. So lots of different ways of editing this, but I think it's cool to export it as a PDF. So that was what I did. Use PDF, change the extension to a PDF, and all I did then was go back to Amazon, and here's my approval. So I put bundles, I sell bundles and I did browse, found my new file that I've called bundles PDF, there it is, and attach that, boom, and submit. And two hours later, I think it was maybe two, three hours later, I got my email back from Amazon. Hi, this is Abash from the Amazon GTIN exemption support team, and this is how it works. So they have said, Okay, you are now approved in the categories office products and grocery. So pretty much I can list anything I like in these categories with a GTIN exemption. I don't need a UPC to list those items. Now what I should say here is if you're selling retail arbitrage products, if you're selling wholesale products, if you're selling anything that has a UPC, then you should use it. Don't abuse this to list regular products that do have UPCs. This is just for listing products that don't have UPCs, like your bundles, your white label products. But this is what you do. So you go to Seller Central and you can list your product and you just say, I have a GTIN exemption. So let's see how it works. We'll go to add a product page and I'm gonna go create a new product listing. Okay, so we're gonna go into Actually, let's do the stationary one. So we're gonna to go to office products and I'm just actually gonna say other office products. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through this to find the right category because we're just testing this out. So we've gone to office products 
And what I can do is actually just go and copy and paste this title here, the Tiki Party Set. So we're going to paste that in there. And manufacturer, we're just going to put bundled brands, bundled brands in there. And manufacturer part number, you can literally, you can put one, you can put the ASIN in there, you can put anything in there. And then product ID, what we're going to do with that is leave that completely blank. So normally this would have a red asterisk and Amazon would force you to fill this in. Because we have now had this email from Amazon, it means that I don't have to fill in that product ID anymore. So I leave that blank and I go to advanced view and it offers me this GTIN exemption reason. So in here, I'm just going to say custom product bundle and leave product ID blank. And you'll now see that the exclamation mark has gone from vital info. I can move on to offer and fill in my offer here and say, okay, it's, I don't know, it's a general product, general tax, new condition, and I'm going to price it at $25. And now you can see we go, oh, and I would want to add my picture in there. I can add my picture, add my keywords, add all of that information. And then I do save and finish. And you'll see that it's gone ahead and added my Tiki party set without a UPC. So that's how the GTIN exemption works. Super straightforward. You can now list your bundles, your white label products, and even your wholesale products that come without UPCs, without needing to go through any third party UPC providers, without having to go through GS1. The only thing I will say is that Amazon tell you that this exemption is provided for a maximum of 90 days due to our system's functionality. Once the exemption expires, you are welcome to reapply for exemption. So that's easy enough. You just, if when you're going to upload more items, you're going to need to reapply for the GTIN exemption. So every three months, when you go to upload new items, you reapply for the GTIN exemption. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So this is such a straightforward way of resolving all the issues that people have had with UPCs. What should we do about them? This is what you do, UPC exemption. All right, good luck, guys. Hope that was super helpful.